All right. Looks like I'm live, folks. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing? Paul Tranny here. I'm going to talk about animating a logo. We're going to be using Adobe Animate and Adobe After Effects, uh, as it says. So what's up, uh, Tuke, Braden, Tim, uh, Dara, good to see you here. Paul Tranny broadcasting from uh, rainy Colorado today. So that's what's going on. Thank you so much. You can hear me. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks, Paul. Good to see you, buddy. Um, and hello from Brazil. So uh, I hope to uh, be in Brazil soon, guys. That's the plan. So I'm going to dive into this. Um, essentially, what I'm going to do is I, I got a lot of questions last week about sort of like animation in not only uh, animate, but also After Effects. I'm like, what's the difference? When would you use one over the other? And actually, how would you animate in either one, right? I think these are all like really good questions. And uh, we can talk about that. I'm sure I'm gonna have a ton of smart people on the stream. So I already see you guys already. So thank you so much for uh, joining me. I'm sure you guys have a lot of advice in this area. Curious if you guys are using After Effects or Animate as well, because um, they're both pretty powerful. And I'm gonna show you how to use both. So I think that sounds fair. Germany in the house. All right, so Chris has never used Animate. Um, Jersey City, yes, Germany, Chicago, My Miami. Cool, guys. So um, I'm just getting this file set up. So I'm gonna just open up a blank canvas uh, in both apps. So you guys don't think I'm, I don't want to be cheating or anything like that, but let's just update this. There we go. Okay, cool. All right. So let's take a look at this, guys. Uh, yes. <coughs> From Egypt with love. Oh, I appreciate that. That's so nice. All right. So I'm sharing my screen. Uh, I'm going to dive into this. Okay. So essentially this is, I have a couple different logos here, and this is kind of the project I've been, I've been, I've been working on. And uh, it's all about this fashion brand, but so that I have like, you know, you have a logo and uh, I know most designers kind of want to see it come to life, right? With animation, right? So how can we do that? How can we do that for different platforms, right? Because you might be using, you know, people might be interacting with your brand, not only in print, but also on the web and also in video in a number of formats as well. So I have two different logos, by the way, I have one here and I have one right here beneath it. Because last week, if you guys have been, uh, you know, kind of watching me and Anna Rising, by the way, just like a shout out to her, of course, because she's the one that did most of the development on this on our live stream two weeks ago. So, um, yeah, so that's what's going on. So this is kind of what we came up with. We ended up with these two logos based on this fashion brand. And both of these are just begging for animation, right? And this is what I'm going to animate right now. Okay, so... Uh, that's the plan. And just as a quick commercial, if you guys don't mind, but since we're talking about creation, I want to kind of clue you guys into uh, what's happening this week. So essentially there's a three-day live stream coming up the next couple days. So thank you, Tim. The, the live stream coming up this week is going to be awesome. So I'll just kind of share that with you guys right now. Uh, pardon this, but yeah, we have a live stream coming up. On adobelive.com, here's more about it right now. So hopefully that audio wasn't too loud, but you can see there's mobile illustration uh, happening, you know, with Alice Lee, um, Shayama Golden, as well as Rob Zilla. Then we also have, um, yeah, Rocky Rourke as well. So a number of illustrators, check that out tomorrow. So let's dive back into this project, right? Because I want you guys, you know, to do your thing and uh, appreciate you joining me. So 
Work it, work it. All right, so here's the different, here, here are the different logos that I was gonna animate, right? And both of these lend themselves to different motion, right? You know, how would we do this um, in Animate and then in After Effects? So right now I'm in Illustrator. I can see these lines, right, individual lines. You could totally see these animating, right, growing and stuff. And that's what I'd wanna do in this case, you know, is take all of these and animate them in, say for instance, Adobe Animate CC. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy this, edit, copy it. I'm gonna open up Animate CC and paste it in like I'm doing right now. Um, I'm not gonna be there. Tim, I am not gonna be there. Um, yeah, but uh, good old Rufus and uh, Michael Shays will be there, so that's awesome. Good for them. All right, so I pasted this in. I'm actually just kind of turning it, here we go, into individual lines is how these are set up. And what I can do even is, I, if, uh, you know, what I should do is I actually would turn these to white first, copy them, and then bring them in here. But I'm showing that you can actually change, you know, any graphics that you paste in. You can paste them in as vectors and then change them once they're in here. I'm gonna change this layer color because that's kind of hard to see. So I should be able to change that layer color real fast. This outline color to red, no, blue, why not? And um, essentially what, uh, let's change this one more time. You can see it blue there. It's still too uh, light. Let's change this to a green. Okay. There we go. So here's, here's this line, right? You can see them all right here. In fact, it's a white stroke. That's what's happening. I could start to break these out into individual elements is what I do. So I take, for instance, uh, in animate, I'd take, for instance, uh, this line right here. Okay, I'd take that line and then I'd cut it and then place it on its own layer. Okay, and I can even paste in place is probably what I should do. Paste in place, boom. Right, so this is my M layer, right? And uh, yeah, so that's what I do. Let me actually flip so I'm on the other side of the screen. That might be easier. Yeah, so uh, sissy, I, I can't really, uh, I can't say if uh, about s enough about speed grade, but a lot of that's actually, yeah, it's getting baked into the software, such as like, uh, you know, Premiere Pro, for instance. So speed grade's awesome, but we're not going to get rid of anything. In fact, we would just make it easier and maybe bake it into other things. Uh, but we're not like, don't worry about it, it going away or anything like that. All right, cool. All right, Brad, you just started using Animate CC a couple weeks ago, and you know as much as you did when you were 14 in Flash. So again, yeah, this is um, this is somewhat related to to Flash. If you're familiar with Flash, Animate CC, uh, you know, is going to be super easy to learn, right? Um, and you can see, I'll show you it right now, because currently I'm actually... What does this say? Oh, canvas file. That's what this is, by the way. This is actually an HTML canvas file. So this is HTML is what I'm basically creating in, right? So Thomas, good call. Hey, what's up, buddy? Good to see you, Thomas. You're exactly right. I'm actually going to be publishing this in HTML, and I can do a shape tween. Another thing I can do is I can always take any element. Sure, I can, you know, save this as moon, you know, HTML, whatever into moon folder, right? So that's my HTML version and I can always convert it back. I can convert it to other document formats, right? So we have WebGL, Flash, and then of course uh, I just mentioned HTML. So that's kind of the idea is like I can kind of bounce between these if I want to. You're really only limited um, by your, uh, by the technology. So now it says Flash, so I can start to use Flash, sure enough, new Flash document created successfully. Uh, that's the whole idea. I could save that. Doesn't really matter. I'm moving along. Thomas, you mentioned shape tween. This is how you animate in Animate CC. You have all these frames right down here, right? So first thing I need to do is extend this out. So I'll kind of come down here to frame 90 and I can click and drag and I can insert frames if I want to. Boom. Now this is going to last that long. I'll hit enter 
and we'll see this playhead move through. But basically what we have is we have all these keyframes. And this is why Animate CC is cool, is I can actually edit things frame by frame. So if I'm doing any, especially if I'm doing any sort of like character animation, this becomes hugely beneficial, right? So the M right down here, what do I want to do? I want to add a keyframe right here. Insert a keyframe at this point. There it is. See it right there? So starting keyframe, ending keyframe. At this starting keyframe, I want to adjust this just like Thomas said. Shape tween is what we'll do, which means I could change the shape of this. So I can select this. You know, it's pretty straightforward because again, uh, it's like I'm I'm using a, you know uh, Illustrator, but I can move that up to that point, and I can take this uh, point right here and drag that down. So that's the starting point. It's here. Ending point is here. Click in between, and what do we do? That's what Thomas said. Create shape tween. He's the boss boom makes it green green is good solid line is good right and now we can see it grow okay so that's what we could do in animate cc we could see those lines grow and i can have a heyday with this guy so i'm gonna like kick it into gear and just go really fast right you know taking this line cutting it putting it on its own layer same thing getting used to shortcut keys What's the shortcut key for um, keyframe? Does anybody remember? Oops, did not want to do that. Shape tween. All right, well, flash be dumbed. I don't know what dumbed mean. It's not gonna be dumbed, uh, basically, this is Adobe Animate CC, so if you're used to Flash, it's basically the same same Flash interface, but just consider it to be platform agnostic, right? Okay, I did the same thing, shape tween, zoop, we could see everything grow, right? So I can start to add these tweens all day long. You guys get the idea. I can take an entire elements. You guys know the power of this, is I could take this, this O, and I, this is what I'm gonna do now, is I'm gonna take this line, this outside line, and I'm gonna convert it to a symbol Again, really fast, O1, right? I'm gonna take this inside one, convert it to a symbol O2, so the inside and the outside, taking both of those, you know, cutting them, making sure they're on their own layers. Another thing you can do is you could do right click and you could do, uh, actually I could just do a click on this layer Help me out here. I want to distribute to layers because that's just going to be easier. Distribute to layers. There it is. So if you select multiple objects, I know they need to be on individual layers. Animate them. I can distribute them to layers, and now they're on individual layers. So what do I do here? It's the same thing. This is the thing, guys. You guys probably already know this. The answer is F6 to add a keyframe is you have to do this create motion tween or create classic tween or create, you actually have to create these tweens. And we do know that uh, in After Effects, I actually don't have to worry about creating these tweens. It's more like just turning it on and then you animate like crazy. So create classic tween, boom. First instance where this is, rotate it. Not quite like that, rotate it this way. Take this instance, rotating it the other way, like that, and let's move it over because it wasn't in the exact center part. It looks like I actually missed some of the line. Good job, Paul. We'll just screw that up. It's all good because what? look what happens. We can see those rotate around, and I can get rid of those residual lines. It looks like something that I probably just like missed. No big deal. Let's just get rid of those. You guys get the idea. So you can see those rotate. So what do we have? We have shape tween, and then we have a motion tween just beneath it. Cool? You guys got it. Easy enough. Hassan, sound good? <laughs> oh, Alexander. Ooh, he's a zinger. That's a zinger, buddy. 
yeah, you can you can create animation to be sure. Yeah, you could call it that animation uh, for technologies that may or may not be around. But the key thing is, is consider this again platform agnostic. So whatever web technology is out there, either whatever there is there today, like Flash, for instance, uh, or whatever will be there tomorrow, animate CC is extensible. We're going to be able to uh, you know publish to any platform or any technology that we want. Right. So, you know, technology is good point. It comes and goes. Um, but this tool isn't right. You're always going to be able to publish to, uh, you know, different platforms is, is the idea. OK, cool. So that's it. You know what? That's really straightforward. I just did this quick animation to show kind of animating a logo using a shape tween and a motion tween. Right. Uh, I can go over to this one. This one I kind of spent a little more time on. Right. So you can see right in here. Let's turn that on. We have this first part fading in and you can see those lines growing uh, just like that. And if I run this test movie in a browser, right? Or even in flash, but you can see that kind of that content kind of move and expand. These are actually movie clips, by the way, is what's going on there. So that's why I only animated once and then I have two movie clips for each one of those. And that's what happens there. So that's animate CC. You guys got it, right? So hopefully that's that's clear uh, as far as animating, sort of platform agnostic. I have to add these keyframes and I have to start to uh, add the tweens in between both of them each and every time, right? And then I can publish, right? So what are my publish settings? Let's take a look. Where can we publish? Yes, you know, say which one about Flash, that's cool. HTML. Um, SWF, all that good stuff. And not only that, but let's go right over here, export movie. So even though I'm using animate CC, I can still export out a video just like I would in After Effects. So Thomas, good to have you over here, buddy. Thank you, Thomas. Boom, nails it. Export movie, I can export out. So this is the thing where it's like, it's exactly this. It's just like... Um, you know, it's just, it gives you to export, excuse me, export movie, export video is what I wanted. You can export uh, video just like you can in After Effects. All right, so I'm going to move on from there, right? So we have all those various settings, kick it out, call it a day, right? This is how you get content into After Effects, by the way, is you have to render it out uh, as a video and then you can bring it in, right? So you could use either tool, but know that you're using the video file format uh, to go from animate to After Effects. But let's click over to After Effects, by the way. Now that uh, animate, you guys kind of get the idea. I'm going to get into After Effects because the reason I'm doing this stream, guys, is I was asked about this uh, a lot last week as well, right? So similar idea, right? Let's just create a new composition. 1920 by 1080. Boom, here we are. Right, let's bring in some graphics. What can we bring in? Well, anything that we want. We can go to File, Import. We can import uh, Illustrator. We can inf import f uh, Photoshop files. We can, of course, import video into After Effects. This is what I thought I'd import, actually, is I have this. I have. I thought I'd play with this logo because I think this one will be fun to work with, just to mix it up a little bit, just so you're not seeing the same thing twice. Okay. Yes, thank you, Thomas. It is vector animation as well. So here I have this file in Photoshop, right? Pretty pretty straightforward. In fact, this is these are the only elements that I really need, right? And guess what? These happen to be shapes, right? There's a number of things I can do, right? I can I can make raster versions of these. So Yeah, Alexander. Um yeah, so so this is the cool thing, Alexander. As you know, um you know, After Effects is solely for um, animating uh, video, so creating video animation. So that's very short and sweet. All right, cool. So this is what I have. I have uh, I have these elements. Um, notice that they are shapes. So I, again, I'm trying to make things interesting and not complex. I hope I don't do myself. I hope I let's rasterize these layers. You know, let's do O raster. You know, just so you guys know, or let's go bitmap. Just to show you what you can import, by the way, because I could bring in these shapes if I want to 
or I can bring them in bitmaps as well. Um, wait for it. And I can show you how they're treated differently, okay? All right, Alexander, awesome. Don't Hey, Alexander, don't you love uh, After Effects? After Effects is like awesome, right? It is fantastic, it really is, right? Taking that same Moon PSD that, that I'm working with, in fact, I'm gonna open that up. I can bring in um, this as footage, as its own composition with editable layer styles. Okay, so let me just increase the size of that for you guys to be able to see. Editable, editable layer styles. I can merge it all into footage. I'm just gonna create my own composition out of this. So everything's gonna be ready to rock, which is great. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. Click OK, boom. Moon, double click on that. Here's my composition right here. Here are all my elements, just my, like my layers. Oh, did I even save that file? I did not save that file. Save it. But here, here everything is. So that's basically what I want. Let me actually just bring that in one more time. Command I. Hopefully that is the correct file that I was opening. But uh, anyways, here it is. All right, here it is. I just didn't save it before I imported it. That's the one thing you do have to do. It does give me guidelines. I don't necessarily need those. I can always turn those off if I want to. Um, so turning off those guides. Much cleaner now. I have all these elements. I could see my final. So this is like the full version like that. I could use that kind of as my template if I want to, right? But I want to animate all that stuff into place. I could do that with the M right here. The N is there. The O, that's just a circle, right? So it brings it in as one big file, just like that, okay? I could use the bitmaps or I could use these, as I select it, these uh, shapes. So these are individual shapes that I could play with, right? And what do we expect with shapes? Sure, we can manipulate the position, all that good stuff. But also with these shapes, we could start to manipulate, uh, you know, the mask on it and basically the shape of this uh, specific element, as you can see right there. All right. Okay, so let's let's get into moving stuff around, right? That's what we want to do is we want to move this stuff around. Let's take that. Let's get rid of those. What do we do when it comes to animation? Take this element. There's my N, right? And below that's my M. So I could take this N. Since everything is already in position, I can scrub down here, further in, and I can twirl down the N and see the different properties that I can animate. So hopefully you're seeing that. What do we want to do? Turn on the position. All I have to do is click that button, turns it on, gives me that keyframe right over here uh, behind my head. And uh, basically that's all I have to do is just like turn it on. And then I can go to the first frame, right? Scrubbing back here and move this over, right? Let's move that N over. Oh, thank you very much After Effects. You went ahead and made a keyframe right there. That's exactly what I want. Right, and we can see it slide out really straightforward. What if I want it to ease? We want to add, add some easing in here. I can right click keyframe assistant, easy ease. Sorry, that's off, off my screen, but easy ease is what I'm adding. Just basically it's gonna slow down as it goes out, right? But that's what I can do. I did that one motion, going through this again, M again. This is what I'll do, hit U. If you hit U, it's gonna show all of your keyframes. It's the Uber key, it's gonna show everything, right? So now we can go ahead and, hey, for position, that's what I'm animating, right? What do I press? P for position, because I wanna move the N. Oh, sorry, ugh. Just move to that, don't you hate it when that happens? Sorry guys, there we go. Uh, so I just, I just hit P and that reveals the position. Now at this point, I could just turn that on by clicking that stopwatch, turns it on, adds the keyframe, go to the beginning. So at the start of this, what do I wanna do? I wanna move it over, so there's my M. Moving it over, 
just with my with my arrow keys quite frankly just moving that over automatically adds that keyframe thank you very much add a little easy ease not easy e easy ease and we can see that content slide out you guys get the picture yeah darn right harsh you love after effects yeah you should <laughs> Right, unlike um, animate, you're gonna hit the space bar and then you can see that stuff slide out, right? You're not entertained yet, I get it. Let's add some more to this. What do we do? We used to, you start to get really quick at this because you're like, hey, I want everything to fade in. Well, let's select all three of these elements. Let hit, let's hit opacity, which is T for us, opacity or transparency, if that makes more sense, right? That brings all of all three of those layers that I have selected, it brings up the opacity for all three. And then what I do is just click them all at once. Click, it adds a keyframe all at once, right? We scrub to the first part, right? With all three selected, I just need to take the opacity down to zero for one of them and it will take it down for all of them. So now we can see them all start to fade in like that. I want the O to fade in faster. What do I do? I bring in this keyframe, right? So it's gonna fade in within the first uh, couple. Seconds. I really need to actually like uh, probably like speed this up a lot faster, but I think this is good for the stream to have it move slow. All right, guys, I'm trying to impress you, which means I have to hurry, right? Hit U for the Uber key. That's gonna bring out all those keyframes. This is fantastic, right? Taking all those. Um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to speed this up by the way. I didn't do this before, but, uh, if you could see the time, I can go into the composition settings and I can see how long this is. Um, what well, it's 11 seconds and I want this to be more like five seconds, right? I can make it five seconds long. So this is what I want. I want to make, create a logo animation. That's only five seconds long because I don't want to board everybody to tears with it. Right, and I can start to move around all these keyframes to get the effect that I want, right? Okay, what about this circle right here, by the way? This, oh, let's, let's play with it some more, right? We have this mask. Um, and uh, we could see that it's that hard line and I wanna make this look like a moon, right? So I wanna soften it up. Well, this is actually a shape and I have this mask on it. So this is the mask shape. So I can actually take this feather and increase it. So I'm increasing the feather and you can see how it obviously gives it a feather, right? And so if there is a stopwatch next to it, it means I can animate it. So I can click that, turn that on. Hey, you're gonna be really fuzzy at that point. So as you fade in, you're gonna be really fuzzy and then you're gonna get really sharp like that. So that's what I'm doing, animating that mask. Hopefully you guys catch a vision for this and how easy this is. Right? So this is uh, Abelash. This is how you could give a glow effect to a moon. But let's, let's you're onto a good point. I wanna do a couple things here really fast because I do actually wanna like create an actual moon because this is so stinking flat. How, what can we do? You're talking about effects. So first of all, I can technically give it a glow effect uh, even out without using a mask. But uh, this is actually just gonna be easier on the renderer. But we see what happens there. Just like that, right? I can do the same thing. I can take this O, I can duplicate it. So Command D, duplicating it, right? I can move it over. Zoop. Let's move it over. Let's check out the opacity for this. Um, so many things I could do, guys. This is the thing. It's like it gets over, it gets really fun is what it gets. But, um, you know, let's have this one fade out. Because if we go back to our reference, remember I'm going to make this logo now. I wanna make something kinda of like that. And look at it has, has that transition there. Like how would I do that? There's about 50 different ways to do it, by the way. I'm gonna show you how I would do it. <sighs> oh yeah, thank you. So Thomas, yeah, the motion editor, it's kind of a way to kinda, of, they're similar between After Effects uh, and Animate. But check this out, guys. I can take this, this, o, this is my O2, this is my second O. Right, I wanna have a gradient on it. This is how I'll just do it, by the way. So I'll add a, another layer mask, right? So I have two layer masks on this puppy, right? I would of course do that. So here's two layer masks on this, right? For the second layer mask, 
right? I can um, add a, I'm just gonna add a feather to it as well. And change that to like intersect. Cause I just want it to fade out. I want it to have this nice fade. So I'm just basically creating two masks and then I'm determining how they interact with one another. Okay, and that's by changing this to subtract. Okay, that's this is just like one way of doing it, but I thought this would be cool. Let's increase this uh, feather, right? And we have more of a transition, okay? Hopefully this isn't too complex, but that's how I'm making this shape. Okay, so now we have that fading out. And remember, since I duplicated it, it's gonna have that same effect as well. Whether I like that or not, it's kind of up to me. But with this O2, you know, I can change accordingly. Maybe it's gonna it's gonna be sharper, faster, or who knows what. But you guys get the idea. Right? Blurry zoop. Duplicating that once more, then I'm gonna call it a day. Then I wanna actually animate a real moon, guys, right? Because that's what After Effects can do. It can take actually take it images, it could go beyond this, because this is honestly like pretty flat in my opinion. So taking this, let's move it over. What do we do? You know, for this one, we could easily change this one as well. Right? So now we have those two both kind of fading in. Something like that. Work with me here, people. I need to make more changes to this. And sorry for not looking at the chat, but I need to move this over. Move that N over. Do this one more time, guys. I want to show you my real moon and some of my other examples that I have. Uh, but let's take this. Since this is done already, it's a matter of just like duplicating these guys. Super easy. Let's duplicate that one. Let's move it over. Right? Something like that. And, uh, you know, I can kind of have some fun with this overlapping now. Right? that right for o2 and o4 hitting t for opacity taking the opacity down for both of those oops wrong ones it is o5 and o4 t taking them down like that cool you guys get the idea all right, so again, uh, you know, I think too many people make things too complex. And if, even if you look at the screen, it already looks very complex. But uh, we've gone a long ways in just creating something simple by having something fade in, right? I'm just animating the feather of the mask, right? And then it gets sharper, right? Taking that feather down to zero, we can see the M and the N slide out nice and easy as well as we get to uh, the five second mark, right? Let's save this file. Let me show you one more thing, right? Since somebody mentioned effects, because effects you can get. Actually, notice what I did is I haven't used any effects, and I think I think you know typically you need to understand like the fundamentals, and then you can start layering on effects. Yeah. So um, yeah. So Roberto, I could have added a um, a uh, applying, a, I could have applied a blur effect. And what I wanted to do is I basically wanted to make this as easy on, easy on the renderer as possible. And I didn't actually want to introduce effects until now. So for those two reasons, I think once you really start adding in effects, it starts to slow down the rendering of it. Um, you know, and, uh, essentially when I'm using masks, this is so far like resolution independent, which is nice. Right. Okay. So let's move on. Let's move on to another example. So let me grab some graphics here. Let me grab a ch -ch 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 -ch. Let's grab this. Turn this off. 
All right, so uh, let me show you this as well, guys. Okay, so so let's let's kind of walk through effects. Okay, so we have right up here effects and presets that uh, I'm opening up off to the side, right? And thank you so much for bringing that up because I could use a blur effect. So right over here, you can see right over here, I could type in blur and apply a blur to something, right? So you can see them right down here, uh, the different blurs, right? So you have quite a few. Gaussian is probably, you know, the easiest to understand for the most part. Um, but you can see a number of the blurs right in there. So I thought I'd do something else because I want to create a, um, a moon, a realistic moon. And what I have is a flat surface right here. So for this flat surface, right, um, I can apply a sphere. So typing in sphere, there it is, perspective, CC sphere. All I have to do is drag it to that footage right? And it makes that sphere for me, right? You can see it right here. Twirl that down. If I twirl this down inside of effects, right? We can see CC sphere. This is exactly what I want. Notice how I can create the radius, make it larger, right? So that looks pretty good, right? And another thing I could do is, is I can play with the rotation, right? So here it is pretty large. Disregard that it's getting smaller. I that's already some um, uh, transform that's happening where it's just like getting, I'm just adjusting the scale. Maybe I should actually take that off so it doesn't get too confusing. But right in here, I can play with the rotation. So not only did it create this cool sphere, but I can start to rotate this. I can rotate it on the Y axis, for instance. So clicking right here, say about, um, however long I want it to be, whatever, 25 seconds is kind of long. I'll have to play with the time later. But clicking right here, turning on the rotation, it adds that keyframe. And uh, from there, I can have it rotate once within that time, right? So now we can see it rotating. And uh, so yeah, super easy to do. I do have a little bit of a seam there. Do you see that seam? I gotta fix that because it's not a perfectly tiled image. That's what you're not supposed to notice, but I do need to fix that still. But this is really cool. Like I basically have this moon rotating and I can put this anywhere I want. So this sphere together is basically like two textures that I put together and I could put that as part of uh, what I was working on earlier. So let's go into my project. What's this moon two, which is super kind of boring. You know, do we drop in the sphere together? This guy, I think this is the guy I was using. Yep. You know, drop that right in here. And there's my, there's my moon that I can play with, right? I still have those same properties. If I twirl down transform, you can see all the different properties that I can play with. And uh, at this point, I'm gonna play with the, I might play with the scale. I don't know. What do you guys think? I might, I actually might do this a little bit differently. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to go into the sphere together because I'm thinking I can take this sphere with this effect. I want to copy it and go into moon two, pasting that in. And now I have that with the effect because I decided I actually wanted to use the effects that I've added in here. And I want to be able to change them and transform them, right? So here we have the scale. Obviously, I'm gonna make it really large at this point. Click, and then I'm gonna shrink it down to be the size of that moon and that position like that. I think that might be kind of cool, right? So it starts out really large, shrinks down, and then I'm gonna change the lighting as well. So you can change the lighting and the shading in here as well. So it's kind of endless what you can do. Uh, yeah, so Thomas, yeah, it's totally like super easy to work with. So, so uh, Photoshop designed, yeah. I do want to do a shout out for Tim for being a moderator, buddy, because you're like so helpful. 
I just really, really, really appreciate you. So thanks so much, man. So this is where it looks cool as it starts to rotate down. U is the Uber key. Let's drop that in there. Rotate, 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 rotate. Shh. Have it rotate a little bit longer. And then I can start to adjust the lighting at this point. And you guys get the idea, hopefully. I hate to say, you get the idea and not show you how to do it. <laughs> um, but it's a lot of these details is what makes everything cool. Starting to change uh, the light intensity, for instance, right here. Adding a keyframe and changing the different uh, you know, shading as well. So uh, that's what I'd start doing is start playing with all of these, uh, you know, making this from a, a sort of a spherical moon to uh, one that is super bright as I start to brighten up the ambience, right? The ambient light gets brighter and brighter. Let's change the light intensity, also gets brighter and brighter. And then also we're going to have this fade out as well. So T for opacity, click. U for is the Uber key. And just to get rid of that last little bit, that's when I'll take this down to zero. Um, what is a command close bracket option? Okay, help me out here. Help me out. Who's... Oh, you kind of like the uh, the uh, eclipse effect when the moon was off center. Oh, good point, Scott. That's a great point. Cause like, it, are we creating enough visual interest um, if this is like going to be in the center? So I think that's that's like a good call. Cause this this logo is just way too symmetrical, right? You could even see that it's actually off as I start to shrink this down. So let's change the scale and move it over. There we go. All right. So last final tweaks. You can still see that rotate. You can see those others kind of fade in and each one of those should move. But I'm gonna let you guys go. I've gone for about 40 minutes. Um, what I'm gonna do, actually what I need to do for all of these, position, let's hit you. Cause I feel like when it hits, that's when these should expand out. So let's go position. Last thing I'm gonna do guys, and I'll probably say that about four more times. But notice how I typically do things in, um, you know, by selecting multiple keyframes at once. Almost done, guys. Almost done with this logo. Moving these in with the arrow keys. Hey, how's everybody doing, by the way? Oh, yeah, I did the Spartan race this weekend in Utah. Spartan Super was supposed to be 10 miles, but it was only like seven. So don't be impressed. Felt felt a little gypped. But it's all good. All right, guys, done. Done and done. I'll render this out and I will post it to um, my, um, uh, to uh, just, I'll just post it to Twitter. Actually, I'll probably post it to Instagram. Um, would you see that shrink down? Wait for it. I'll post them to uh, Instagram at P-T-R-A-N-I and then also to Twitter. So... <laughs> 
not bad for only spending about uh, 20 minutes on it. I mean, it's it's not bad. Hopefully you guys like it. Yeah, seven miles is not a lot. It should have been should have been a lot more, man. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that was the idea, guys, to kind of show you the difference between After Effects and Animate. Animate's going to be frame by frame. Um, manipulating, you have to add all your own keyframes and be really deliberate about it. In, in After Effects, all you have to do is turn it on with the stopwatch. And But hopefully that was a good little crash course in both of them, dealing with a fun logo project. And hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Thank you so much, Tim, for being moderator. Paul, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Thank you so much, Rodrigo and uh, Thomas and everyone. Uh, we will see you soon. Don't forget to like. We're also live streaming on Facebook, uh, Creative Cloud page, as well as you know Adobe Stock and all that good stuff. And don't forget about the live stream coming up uh, tomorrow, 9 a.m. PST. So thank you so much, everyone. Um, uh, for watching. So thank you, and we'll see you soon. And be kind to your neighbor, huh? Thanks, guys.